Hi, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to handle all the free motion special effects that we learned about earlier when we were creating that quilt top. But first, let's take a minute to review where we left off. When we left the quilt top we'd been working on, we'd added a trapunto layer to all the tulips and swirls, and we'd also done some free motion machine embroidery to create a couple of textured grapevine curly cues. This shot shows what our top looked like from the front once we'd finished piecing the whole thing, and this shot shows what the back looked like. You can see all the pieces of extra batting underneath the tulips and swirls. But we're actually going to set this quilt aside for a minute and use a very similar quilt that's a little bit more detailed and a little bit tougher to quilt for our demo today. Now this quilt is further along and you'll notice that there are applique shapes fused around three of the four sides outside of that center panel. Notice also that instead of using a satin stitch to finish the edges of the central panel, I've instead couched down a very heavy upholstery braid. This adds far more texture to the piece overall and it makes for a very strong border edge treatment. But there's an even bigger difference with this quilt here and you really can't see it without looking at the back side. So let's flip it over and take a look at what's going on on the opposite side. Do you see that batting layer that overlies the entire center panel? That was added to really make that center panel stand out, <laughs> and it will. But it's important to know that all of the tulips and swirls in the center section have also been trapuntoed. So all of those areas will actually have three layers of batting under them once this top is done, and the rest of the center will have two layers of batting. Working in this way will assure us of creating a quilt that is just loaded with texture, and you'll see some of the challenges that go along with quilting multiple layers of trapunto once we begin quilting it. But first, I need to add trapunto to that third side of the outer border, and we'll do the EKG edge finishing stitch to all of those applique shapes. Once that's done, we'll be ready to throw this baby into a final quilt sandwich and quilt her out. I'm not going to spend much time on this because you already know how to do it, but what I want you to see is that adding the trapunto layer and doing this decorative stitching is a bit more challenging on the outer borders than it was in the center panel. The whole reason for that is because now this quilt is larger and by having two layers of trapunto in that center area, that center has taken on some significant weight and it kind of fights me as I'm moving the quilt to do this other work. I point this out because it illustrates a very important point about decorative stitching and adding trapunto layers, and that is that you always want to get as much work as possible done when you're working with the smallest pieces possible. There was a really good reason why I did all that work on the center before I had fused it to this larger piece, so always remember to think through your project before you start joining all your pieces together because you may be able to get through a lot of the tough stuff earlier on than you'd think. Once all that trapunto work has been stitched, we cut away the excess batting just as before, and now it's time to place this quilt into the final quilt sandwich. My quilt is in the final quilt sandwich, and it's loaded on my machine bed so I can begin stitching around all of these trapuntoed applique shapes within the central panel. When you do trapunto work like this, always begin at the center and work on contiguous areas of the quilt as you work your way out toward the edges. Now the goal of this type of quilting is to make all of our trapunto tulips and swirls stand out. Now this will happen by virtue of the fact that we are outlining them with stitching. Once the background around these flowers has been quilted, they will really pop out. Now I don't want my outlining to show, so I'm using invisible thread in my top needle, and the specific thread I'm using is clear monopoly thread by Superior Threads. 
This is a wonderful thread to create all kinds of cool textural effects on quilts, but you don't want the actual thread itself to be noticed. You'll notice that I am outlining every part of each tulip, and that's important because it adds a sense of complexity to our tulips. When I outline the outer edges of the tulips, sometimes I stitch just outside the applique edge, and sometimes I stitch just inside that edge. For me, it really boils down to which way will have a lesser chance of the thread being seen. Notice that when I'm working on shapes like tulips, I frequently skip around from one part of the tulip to the next part of the tulip and I leave a thread trail in my wake. I'll need to go back in later on and clip all of those off the front and back of the quilt and those stitches will be secure as long as you've taken some locking stitches before moving from one shape to the next. This is a way to be more efficient with your stitching since you can avoid excessive stopping and starting new lines of thread, but the only time I ever work like this is when I'm using invisible thread because you wouldn't be able to get away with this with any thread that was visible. The way I handle the grapevine curly cues is to stitch just outside my already stitched line with the invisible thread. I simply follow all the twists and turns until I reach the end of the curly cue, then I turn around and stitch that opposite side on my way back. Once I've gone back later and quilted the background, this will make these curly cues really pop out. As I work, notice that I'm crossing my thread line any time that I reach an actual curly cue, and that's okay. Now, there are a couple of very important things you need to know about sewing with invisible thread. So let's take a second to go over those before we move into the next section. You may have noticed that my needle is pretty narrow. That's because it's a size 60 slash 8 Microtech Sharp Needle, and that is the smallest needle you can buy for your home domestic sewing machine. The reason that needle is so small is that even though the thread is so fine that you won't see the thread, the needle will leave a trail of telltale holes in its wake, and those can be seen. I'm working around a lot of fused applique, and the holes my needle makes in the fused applique won't heal, so that's why you want to use a very small needle like this one when you have invisible thread in your top needle. And now you're probably asking yourself what kind of thread you should use in the bobbin when you've got invisible thread in your top needle. There are all kinds of options here. You could use invisible thread in your bobbin, or you could pick another lightweight thread, and my favorites for this are bottom line bobbin fill thread, so fine polyester thread, or masterpiece cotton thread. All of these are very fine, lightweight threads, and they'll play nicely with the monopoly thread on top. I'm using a smoke-colored so fine in the bobbin now, only because I'm stitching over multiple fabric colors, and it would be impossible to match all of those colors with one thread color. So that's how easy it is to work with trapundo shapes and the grapevine curly cues that we free motion embroidered on the earlier tutorial. Stay tuned because in the next segment we're going to learn how to free motion quilt that center panel. So long!